Hi, my name is David. I'm going to tell you today about the story of one of the most mind-blowing objects in the universe. The story takes us all the way back to almost the beginning of time, and what becomes of this object can determine the future of life on Earth. It is so important that last year the Nobel Prizes in Physics were awarded to scientists who studied it. I'm going to tell you about the supermassive black hole in the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Let's go back to the beginning. It is only 200 million years after the Big Bang, a tiny amount of time in the vast history of the universe. The first stars have just formed. Unlike the Sun, these stars are extremely massive, they're blue, and they're very hot. Stars like these didn't form individually, they formed in clusters. And these clusters of stars formed the first structures which would eventually become galaxies. We call these proto-galaxies. Now when stars that are so massive die, they go supernova. This is a monstrous explosion that does two things. It spreads the heavy elements that form in these stars out into interstellar space. But they also form gigantic objects like black holes in the core of these stars. And when you have clusters of these extremely massive stars, you're left with clusters of black holes. These don't stay independent. They quickly merge together under the forces of gravity to produce something larger. We call these black hole seeds, and they are what become the supermassive black holes that we find today in the universe. Eventually, these proto-galaxies merge together to become larger objects, and the black holes in their centers also grow. Some of them grow rapidly to produce gigantic supermassive black holes. Some of them grow fairly slowly and may not change much from their sort of seed status. Let's consider the situation today. What has happened to that proto-galaxy that we just saw and its black hole? That galaxy has turned into something substantially larger, something we may now recognize. This is our own Milky Way galaxy. It's a gigantic spiral. It looks nothing like the proto-galaxy from which it first uh, evolved. Let's examine our place in the galaxy. Between the Sun and the center of the galaxy, shown in this image as a sort of region with yellow color, are a couple of spiral arms. And since we are immersed in the disk of the galaxy, from, the, from our vantage point, the rest of the galaxy appears to be a thin band in the sky, which we know and love as the Milky Way. Where is the center of the galaxy from our viewpoint? It's in the constellation of Sagittarius, a band of the Milky Way which is full of stars, gas, dust, and star-forming regions which you can see here in red and blue. These are nebulae. What about the center of the galaxy itself? Where would that be? It's actually fairly nondescript. It's hard to identify if you didn't know where it was. Here it is. The region around the center looks fairly dark, and that's because there's a lot of obscuration of our view to the center. If we had a way to peer through that dust, we would see something completely different. And in fact, we do, using infrared light. Here is an infrared image of the center of our Milky Way. In this entire view, you'll find a central concentration. It is called the nucleus, and it is truly a very special part of the galaxy. There's only one nucleus. The nature of the nucleus really stands out if you look at it not in the light that our eyes can see, but in wavelengths of light that give us insight into different processes. So let me show you this image here of the nucleus of our galaxy in radio and x-ray light. The red color here represents radio light. This comes from, from particles that are moving at close to the speed of light. So they're extremely energetic, and they trace 
the positions of magnetic fields in the center of our galaxy. The green colors here represent hot gas, and the blue dots are enormous numbers of neutron stars and small black holes, black holes the mass of our sun or so, which have formed from many generations of stars that have been born and gone supernova in this area around the center of our galaxy. But what makes the nucleus particularly special can be seen in the center. That white region there is actually really bright in both X-rays and the radio. And we call this source Sagittarius A star. Now think back to that primordial black hole that formed way back in the history of the universe. That black hole has grown only a little bit, actually, since its early days. It settled into the nucleus of our own galaxy. And that's where we find the galaxy's supermassive black hole. How do we study this supermassive black hole? Astronomers have come up with some really ingenious ways to do this, and one of the best ways currently is to actually look at the motions of stars around the black hole itself. Because the black hole is so massive, it is capable of moving stars at a much higher rate than you would find uh, in other parts of the galaxy, for example. So using the best te technology that we have, the biggest telescopes and the most advanced imaging methods, we've been able to peer through this forest of stars in the very center, in the infrared, and actually track the motions of individual stars around the black hole. Here's an image that shows you what those stars look like. And over several years, we've been able to track the motions of these stars. And those motions tell us that there's something incredibly massive in the very center. Here is a visualization of the motion of those stars in the vicinity of the black hole. I want you to pay particular attention to a star that is marked by its yellow track. Notice that it gets extremely close to the center, marked by that star point, which is the position of the black hole. And in fact, over the course of the past couple of decades, it has actually passed the galactic center twice, most recently in 2018. Now that star is the closest object we know that has passed by the supermassive black hole. We call that star S02 or S2, and it's given some, uh, some fantastic insight into the nature of the black hole itself. Here is a figure showing our best observations of the position of S2 in the sky over many years. And I want you to pay particular attention to its most recent approach towards the position of the black hole, which is this little region there. We can zoom into that a little bit. When S2 passed at its closest to the black hole, its distance from the black hole was only a little larger than the size of our own solar system, an extremely small distance compared to the scale of things in the galaxy. When S2 passed at its nearest to the black hole, we observed something quite remarkable. The light of S2 appeared to turn redder. And this told us that S2 was passing by an incredibly massive gravitational field. In fact, this is some of the best evidence we have that Sagittarius A star hosts a supermassive black hole of about three and a half to four million times the mass of the sun. In 2020, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three scientists who made groundbreaking strides in our understanding of supermassive black holes, and in particular, the supermassive black hole, the center of our Milky Way. Many of the scientific results that I just showed you of the stars moving in the nucleus of our galaxy was led by the scientists shown here. Now you may ask, how does the study of Sagittarius A star affect us on Earth? What difference does it make for humanity? In order to understand this, let's take a look at our own galaxy. 
here's a beautiful image of our own galaxy spanning the entire sky, but this isn't light that we can see. Here's an image of the galaxy in the x-rays. It looks very different. What I want you to pay attention to are these enormous bubbles that seem to be going above and below the plane of the galaxy. These bubbles trace very hot gas coming from the center. We believe that this hot gas was blown out by the supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy. How does this work? When gas flows in to the black hole from the larger scale galaxy, it forms a structure called an accretion disk. And this accreting gas can get extremely hot before it falls into the black hole. It can produce a lot of high energy radiation. And this radiation can escape from the black hole and go out into the galaxy itself. It can also produce these structures that we call jets, as you can see in this animation, which come north and south or up and down from the accretion disk itself. We call this supermassive black hole activity. When this hot gas escapes out from the galaxy, it can spread out over a really large volume. And in fact, it can carry energy from the scale of the black hole all the way out into the rest of the disk of the galaxy, out to the distances where our own sun and our own solar system reside. In order for stars to form, cold gas has to collect and then collapse under gravity. This heat that comes from the gas that escapes the black hole can keep this cold gas from forming and therefore prevent stars from forming altogether. In fact, we think that black holes play a big role in the suppression and cessation of star formation in galaxies like our own. So if our own black hole became very active in the future and grew substantially, and this would be really important for the future of life on Earth. There'd be less star formation, less supernovae, less disturbance in our general neighborhood. So there is this interesting and fairly deep connection between the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy and the future of our own planet and potentially of our own civilization.